Unit six. Vietnam, then and now. Unit six. Page sixty. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. Can you believe it's the school's sixtieth anniversary? I know. I really like the photo exhibition. It's fascinating to see how the school used to look. Right. The photos explain a lot about our school in the past. Look, these two pictures were taken in 1970. Wow, that long ago. The school looks more like thatched houses with paddy fields all around. You can see there were only a few classrooms, and the walls were made of mud and straw. And look, trenches. I think that was during the war, so it was necessary to have the trenches right there. Ha! The students in this picture are wearing rubber sandals and straw hats. Hey, and these pictures were taken in 1985. Look at the broken tiled roof and wooden window frames. And some of them are missing. Yes, I can't imagine how those students could study in such poor conditions. Right, things have improved considerably now. We have everything: comfortable classrooms, learning facilities like computer rooms. Yeah, we also have nice uniforms and proper shoes. We're much luckier these days, but I'm not sure our grades are better. Unit six, page sixty-three. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Write each sentence in the box next to its pattern. Then listen, check, and repeat. One. I know. That long. Don't cry. Two. Go away. Three. Keep going. Four. Don't turn left. Unit six. Page sixty-seven. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Nick is talking to Mrs. Ha, Young's mother, about her family in the past. Listen to the conversation and fill in the blanks. So, how many generations shared a house when you were young, Mrs. Ha? Well, unlike today, people of my generation mostly lived in extended families. Really? How many of you were there? Nine. My grandparents, my uncle, his wife, and kids, my parents, and me. And did you each have a private room like now? No, we shared most things, even the bedrooms and bathroom. I can't imagine. How about meals? Meal times were great because we could have time together every day. We talked about our day. Problems at work, or things happening in the village. It sounds great. So, who did the shopping and cooking? Mostly my grandma. She was very hardworking, and kind, caring, and tolerant. Wow! You all must have been tolerant to get along so well. Yes, this is especially true when it came to decision making. What happened then? We didn't always agree. But we learned to talk, listen, and compromise. Our granddad made the final decision, and we followed. Hmm, sounds fascinating. Unit six, page sixty-seven. 
Skills two. Listening. Activity three. Listen again, and decide if the following statements are true or false. So, how many generations shared a house when you were young, Mrs. Ha? Well, unlike today, people of my generation mostly lived in extended families. Really? How many of you were there? Nine. My grandparents, my uncle, his wife, and kids, my parents, and me. And did you each have a private room like now? No, we shared most things. Even the bedrooms and bathroom. I can't imagine. How about meals? Meal times were great because we could have time together every day. We talked about our day, problems at work, or things happening in the village. It sounds great. So who did the shopping and cooking? Mostly my grandma. She was very hardworking, and kind, caring, and tolerant. Wow. You all must have been tolerant to get along so well. Yes, this is especially true when it came to decision making. What happened then? We didn't always agree, but we learned to talk, listen, and compromise. Our granddad made the final decision, and we followed. Hmm, sounds fascinating. Unit Seven. Recipes and eating habits. Page six. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. Today we're making a prawn salad, which is a favorite of mine. Fantastic! I love salad. The salad is simple but delicious. Here are the ingredients: prawns, celery, spring onion, mayonnaise, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. What should I do first, Mum? Get a big bowl for me, and then can you wash the celery? Sure. I can wash the spring onions if you like, Mrs. Warner. Please do. I'll boil the prawns. So. Do English people eat lots of salad? Yes, especially in the summer time. People often serve salad as a starter, but salads also make a healthy lunch or supper. You're right; they're so versatile, and you can put anything in a salad. Mum, the prawns are pink now. They're pink. Yes. Good. They're ready. I'll drain them. Nick, can you peel them? Me. Could you chop the celery and spring onions? You should be careful if you use the red knife; it's sharp. Right, everything's ready. What do we do next? Okay, first combine the prawns and celery in the bowl. Add two tablespoons of mayonnaise, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and some lemon juice. Now mix all the ingredients well. Okay. Finally, add the spring onion on top. Now we cover the bowl and leave it in the fridge for an hour. You've done a good job, both of you. I can't wait to try it. Yeah, I'm starving. An hour is a long time. Unit seven. Page eight. Getting started. Activity two. Write the name of each dish in the box under each picture. A, cob salad. B, sushi. C, steak pie. D, fajitas. E, lasagna. F. Mango sticky rice. G. Beef noodle soup. H. Curry.
Unit 7 Page 10 A Closer Look 1 Pronunciation Activity 5 Listen to the conversations. Draw a falling arrow or rising arrow at the end of each line. Practice the conversations with a partner. 1. What do we need to make a pizza? A pizza base, some cheese, some bacon, an onion and an apple. An apple? Yes, an apple. 2. What's for dinner? We're eating out tonight. We're eating out? Right. 3. I can't eat this dish. Why not? I'm allergic to prawns. Allergic to prawns? Yes. My skin turns red when I eat them. Unit 7 Page 13 Communication Activity 2A now, listen to the first part of a talk where me is presenting how to prepare the ingredients. Check your answers. Part 1. Pumpkin soup is my family's favourite soup. We usually have it for breakfast with some slices of bread. It's quick and simple to cook. The ingredients are a kilo of pumpkin, two shallots, two sticks of celery, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of fresh cream, and a pinch of salt. Before cooking, peel the pumpkin and chop it into cubes. Peel the shallots and slice them. Next, wash the celery and remove the leaves. Unit 7 Page 13 Communication Activity 3C Listen to the second part again. What are the health benefits of this dish? Part 2 Here are the steps to make the soup. Heat the butter in a deep pan, add the shallots and celery and stir-fry for a few minutes. Add the pumpkin and stir-fry for a few more minutes. Add 750 milliliters of water and a pinch of salt and cook until the pumpkin is tender. Cool for 10 minutes. Puree the soup in a mixer until it is smooth. Add the cream and simmer for two to three minutes. For the finishing touch, garnish it with some celery leaves. Pumpkin soup is very healthy. It's a good source of fiber, minerals and vitamins, especially vitamin A. If you eat this soup regularly, you can improve your eyesight and protect yourself from certain cancers. Unit 7 Page 13 Communication Activity 2B Listen to the first part of the talk again. Fill each blank with a word or phrase. Part 1 Pumpkin soup is my family's favourite soup. We usually have it for breakfast with some slices of bread. It's quick and simple to cook. The ingredients are a kilo of pumpkin, two shallots, two sticks of celery, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of fresh cream, and a pinch of salt. Before cooking, peel the pumpkin and chop it into cubes. Peel the shallots and slice them. Next, Wash the celery and remove the leaves.
Unit Seven. Page fifteen. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Fourteen Radio is asking two students about their eating habits. Listen to what they say and decide if the statements are true or false. I don't have a proper breakfast. I never have time because I always get up late. Normally, my mum buys a packet of biscuits and I have some on the school bus. At lunch time, I'm always hungry, so I have a hamburger, a packet of crisps, and a cola. I can easily get them at the school canteen. For dinner, I like fried beef, noodles, and eggs. I don't really eat vegetables because they aren't tasty. My mum says my eating habits are unhealthy. I'm thinking about changing them. If I continue eating like this, I may become overweight. My brother doesn't have healthy eating habits, but I do. For breakfast, I usually have a bowl of cereal, a glass of milk, and a banana. It's important to start a new day with a good breakfast, so I tend to have nutritious things. I don't buy lunch at school. Instead, I prepare my lunch box with two slices of bread, a boiled egg, and salad. Sometimes my mom makes sushi for my lunch. In the evening, my mom and I cook dinner. My favorite is steamed fish. Lean grilled chicken is also a dish I like for dinner. Unit Nine. English in the World. Page thirty. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. Welcome to English Club. Today I'm going to do a quick quiz to check your knowledge of the English language. Question one. Is English the language which is spoken by most people in the world? Of course, it is. Incorrect. Chinese is the language which is spoken by most people in the world. Question two: Does English have the largest vocabulary? Yes, with approximately five hundred thousand words and three hundred thousand technical terms. Yes, spot on. This is due to the openness of the English language. English has borrowed words from many other languages. Yeah, if there weren't so many words, it would be easier for us to master it. Ha <laughs> ha! But the simplicity of form makes English easy to learn. Many English words have been simplified over the centuries. Now, question three: Who can tell me an English word that can operate as a noun, a verb, and an adjective? I think the word subject can operate as noun, verb, and adjective. Excellent. In English, the same words can operate as many parts of speech. That's due to its flexibility. 
Question four: What is the longest word in English which has only one vowel? Is it length? No, I think it's strength. That's right, V. Lastly, question five: Who can tell me at least three varieties of English? American English, Australian English, and、uh, yes, Indian English. Unit nine. Page thirty-four. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Listen to the conversations. Do you think the voice goes up or down at the end of each second sentence? Draw a suitable arrow at the end of each line. One. Tom found a watch on the street. No, he found a wallet on the street. Two. Where did Tom find this watch? He found it on the street. Three. Let's have some coffee. But I don't like coffee. Four. Let's have a drink. What would you like? I'd like some coffee. Five. This hat is nice. I know it's nice, but it's expensive. Six. This bed is big. I know it's big, but that one's bigger. Unit nine. Page thirty-four. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity six. Read the conversation. Does the voice go up or down on the underlined words? Draw a suitable arrow at the end of each line. Then listen, check, and repeat. What make of TV shall we buy? Let's get the Samsung. I think we should get the Sony. It's really nice. But the Samsung is nicer. But the Sony has a guarantee. They both have a guarantee. How much is the Sony? It's six hundred dollars. It's too expensive. I know it's expensive, but it's of better quality. They're both of good quality. Unit nine, page thirty-four. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity four. Listen and repeat, paying attention to the tones of the underlined words in each conversation. One. I'd like some oranges, please. But we don't have any oranges. Two. What would you like, sir? I'd like some oranges. Three. I'll come here tomorrow. But our shop is closed tomorrow. Four. When is your shop closed? It is closed tomorrow. Unit nine. Page thirty-nine. Skills two. Listening. Activity one. Listen to four different people talking about speaking and learning languages. Match the summaries to each speaker. There is one extra summary. My first language is French. But I live near the border, so I'm reasonably good at German. I can also get by in Italian. We went to Rome last summer, and I picked up the basics. My mother is Spanish, and my father is French, so I'm bilingual. I'm also fluent in English, which I need for my job. I can have a conversation in Italian. 
but it's a bit rusty. I used to be quite bad at English. I knew a few words of everyday English that I learnt at school, but I couldn't speak a word of anything else. Last summer, I went to England on holiday. While I was travelling around the country, I picked up enough words and phrases to get by. I was told that my pronunciation was quite good, so when I got home, I decided to learn English properly. Last year, I got a job in a multinational company, so I had to learn English. A friend recommended an English center, and I have been going there for six months. I always enjoy the lessons, and the language is taught in a communicative way. I think I've learned a lot since I started. It's not all fun, though. At the moment, I'm studying for my first exam. Unit nine. Page thirty nine. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen to the extracts again and answer the questions. My first language is French, but I live near the border, so I'm reasonably good at German. I can also get by in Italian. We went to Rome last summer, and I picked up the basics. My mother is Spanish, and my father is French, so I'm bilingual. I'm also fluent in English, which I need for my job. I can have a conversation in Italian, but it's a bit rusty. I used to be quite bad at English. I knew a few words of everyday English that I learnt at school. But I couldn't speak a word of anything else. Last summer, I went to England on holiday. While I was travelling around the country, I picked up enough words and phrases to get by. I was told that my pronunciation was quite good, so when I got home, I decided to learn English properly. Last year, I got a job in a multinational company, so I had to learn English. A friend recommended an English center, and I have been going there for six months. I always enjoy the lessons, and the language is taught in a communicative way. I think I've learned a lot since I started. It's not all fun, though. At the moment, I'm studying for my first exam. Unit ten. Space travel. Page forty-six. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. Wow! Is that you in this photo? The youngest astronaut in the world doing a spacewalk. <laughs> yeah, it was in a museum in Sweden. You look so excited. Well, that trip made me crazy about space. Before I turned ten, I'd already collected lots of books about the universe. I'd learnt about the planets, the stars, satellites, rockets, and stuff. You know, last year I visited an astronomy museum. And I touch a meteorite. A meteorite. What was it like? Honestly, it wasn't as impressive as I'd expected. It was just like an ordinary piece of rock. But perhaps it was from Mars. Think of that. Maybe. Do you think there could be life on Mars? It's possibly habitable. It once had an ocean. Who knows? In twenty years, we might be flying there on a discovery mission. Ha. <laughs> But we'd need to do some serious training first. They say you practice by scuba diving in a flight suit. That's right, and you also have to experience microgravity on a parabolic flight. What's that? The plane flies at high altitude, then it climbs sharply for a few seconds and descends sharply, a bit like a roller coaster. The people inside the plane start to float. I'd love to do that. Sounds a bit scary. But let's take a look at your rock collection. 
There may be something interesting here. Yes, perhaps a meteorite that landed on Earth from the moon. Unit ten, page fifty. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Practice saying the statements and short dialogues. Then listen to the recording and check your pronunciation. One. Wow, your backpack is heavy. Well, I didn't put much in it. Just two T-shirts, one pair of jeans, a telescope, and my rock collection. Two. On his farm, his father used to have five horses, four cows, four hens, and one cat. Three. What do you think the universe includes? I think it includes stars, planets, and galaxies. Four. Which of the following do you think can follow the verb launch to form a phrase? I think they are launch a satellite, launch a rocket, and launch a spacecraft. Five. Can you see anything from there? Yes, I can see a small red house, a garden, a bicycle, a lake, and a boat. Unit ten, page fifty-five. Skills two. Listening. Activity one. Look at the pictures and discuss with your partner what is happening in them. Can you guess what the recording is about? Now listen and check. Dreaming of a holiday sunbathing on Mars or playing some sports at a lunar resort and spa? While it may take decades for these ideas to come true, space tourism. Which is space travel for recreational, leisure, or business purposes is becoming more realistic. Since 2001, the American company Space Adventures has flown tourists to the International Space Station to live and work alongside professional astronauts for up to 10 days. The company now offers a service called Spacewalk, where clients can leave the ISS and float above the Earth. It also plans to launch by 2018 its circumlunar mission, which takes clients to within 100 kilometers of the moon's surface. Virgin Galactic, the world's first space line, has been preparing to launch its first manned space flight. By 2015, almost 700 people from more than 50 different countries have paid deposits at the price of $250,000. Per ticket, the possibility of traveling into space sounds wonderful, but it has been criticized as well. People say it's costly, dangerous, and unsustainable, since its growth could cause environmental problems, including speeding up global warming. Unit ten, page fifty-five. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen again. Then answer the questions with no more than three words. Dreaming of a holiday sunbathing on Mars or playing some sports at a lunar resort and spa. While it may take decades for these ideas to come true. Space tourism, which is space travel for recreational, leisure, or business purposes, is becoming more realistic. Since 2001, the American company Space Adventures has flown tourists to the International Space Station to live and work alongside professional astronauts for up to 10 days. 
The company now offers a service called Spacewalk, where clients can leave the ISS and float above the Earth. It also plans to launch by 2018 its circumlunar mission, which takes clients to within 100 kilometers of the Moon's surface. Virgin Galactic, the world's first space line, has been preparing to launch its first manned space flight. By 2015, almost 700 people from more than 50 different countries have paid deposits at the price of $250,000 per ticket. The possibility of traveling into space sounds wonderful, but it has been criticized as well. People say it's costly, dangerous and unsustainable since its growth could cause environmental problems including speeding up global warming. Unit 10 Page 55 Skills 2 Listening Activity 3 Match the numbers to their references. Then, listen and check your answers. Dreaming of a holiday sunbathing on Mars or playing some sports at a lunar resort and spa? While it may take decades for these ideas to come true, space tourism, which is space travel for recreational, leisure or business purposes, is becoming more realistic. Since 2001, the American company Space Adventures has flown tourists to the International Space Station to live and work alongside professional astronauts for up to 10 days. The company now offers a service called Spacewalk, where clients can leave the ISS and float above the Earth. It also plans to launch by 2018 its circumlunar mission, which takes clients to within 100 kilometers of the Moon's surface. Virgin Galactic, the world's first space line, has been preparing to launch its first manned space flight. By 2015, almost 700 people from more than 50 different countries have paid deposits at the price of $250,000 per ticket. The possibility of traveling into space sounds wonderful, but it has been criticized as well. People say it's costly, dangerous and unsustainable since its growth could cause environmental problems including speeding up global warming. Unit 11 Changing Roles in Society Page 58 Getting started. Activity 1. Listen and read. We have invited some students from Oak Tree School in Happy Valley to this Beyond 2030 Forum, and they are going to share with us their vision of the future. Would you like to go first, Fum? I believe the biggest change will take place within the school system. Apart from at school, we will also be learning from places which will give us real-life knowledge and experience, such as at a railway station, in a company, or on a farm. I agree. This real-life application of learning will give us a sense of participation, a feeling that we are part of the process. And what about the role of teachers? Ah, they will be more like facilitators rather than information providers. Fascinating. How else do you see the future, Nguyen? Well, I think the role of fathers will drastically change. Oh, yes? In what way? The modern father will not necessarily be the breadwinner of the family. He may be externally employed, or he may stay at home to take care of his children. And do the housework? Yes, it's work, paid or not, isn't it? Absolutely. The benefit will be that children will see their fathers more often and have a closer relationship with them. I don't see much of my dad, but I love every moment I spend with him. Well, we are certainly covering some interesting topics. Unit 11 
page 62. A closer look, one. Pronunciation. Activity 5. Listen carefully and tick the correct box. Then listen again and repeat. 1. No one can deny it. 2. All of us can see your point. 3. We will help him with the money. 4. You will be cooking? 5. Well, you may be right. Unit 11 Page 62 A closer look, 1 Pronunciation Activity 6 Mark Mike's sentences with falling or rising arrows. Then listen and check. We have to educate the public about wildlife. Yes, that's important. And we must act to save endangered species. That helps. Keeping wild animals in zoos can help protect them. That's an important point. Zoos can make money for their conservation programs through charging entrance fees. Hmm, yes. I suppose so. Unit 11 Page 67 Skills 2 Listening Activity 2 Listen to the description of some changes in the roles of women in Kenya. Decide if the statements are true or false. Back in the mid-20th century, Kenya was a more male-dominated society compared to today. Men were ahead of women in both education and employment, but the situation has changed a lot since then. More and more women work these days. They earn to support their families as well as to be financially independent. More women study nowadays. Higher education has witnessed a great rise in the number of women attending colleges and universities. Let's look at some figures. In 1995, 65% of Kenyan females stayed at home as housewives. This number dropped dramatically to 47% in 2010. It is predicted that this number will keep falling to around 30% in 2025. Only 22% of university students were girls in Kenya in 1995. Fifteen years later, in 2010, this number went up to 36%. Research shows that it will keep rising, and in 2025, about 48% of the student population will be made up of females. Unit 11 Page 67 Skills 2 Listening Activity 3 Listen again to part 2 and fill the blanks with the correct information. Let's look at some figures. In 1995, 65% of Kenyan females stayed at home as housewives. This number dropped dramatically to 47% in 2010. It is predicted that this number will keep falling to around 30% in 2025. Only 22% of university students were girls in Kenya in 1995. Fifteen years later, in 2010, this number went up to 36%.
research shows that it will keep rising, and in 2025, about 48% of the student population will be made up of females. Unit 12 My Future Career Page 70 Getting Started Activity 1 Listen and read. I've been choosing my school subjects for next year. I've decided to take a vocational GCSE along with some traditional academic subjects. A vocational GCSE? What's that? Well... GCSEs are secondary certificates of education which are studied by students aged between 14 to 16. In vocational subjects, students can study a work sector like applied business, design, health, or tourism. Isn't it hard to study both academic and vocational subjects at the same time? And isn't it too soon to be doing vocational training? Well, no. They offer an applied approach to learning, so it's not too difficult or too soon. I think it adds variety. Oh, I see. What area are you interested in? Leisure and tourism. So, what job opportunities are there in tourism? A lot. You can work as a housekeeper, receptionist, tour guide, lodging manager, chef, or event planner. You can also work in customer service. Sounds interesting. What if you change your mind later? No worries. I can still progress to further education to take A-levels. With A-levels, I can go to college or university. What about you? My dad is encouraging me to choose biology, chemistry, and physics. Wow. To become a doctor? Yeah. We've discussed becoming a doctor, but I may also become a biologist. Unit 12 Page 74 A Closer Look 1 Pronunciation Activity 5 The responses to the pairs of sentences are the same, but the speakers have opposite attitudes. Listen Draw arrows to show the tones, then repeat. 1A They have a new air conditioner. Brilliant! 1B There's going to be an electricity cut today. Brilliant! 2A I got the sack. Well done! 2B. I got a promotion again. Well done! 3A. I got an A in the exam. Excellent! 3B. I failed the exam again. Excellent! 4A. Her application was turned down. Amazing. 4B. I've been offered two jobs at the same time. Amazing. 5A. We're having a company holiday in a luxury resort. How awful. 5B. He has decided to cut down on our wages. How awful. Unit 12 Page 74 A Closer Look 1 Pronunciation Activity 4 Listen to the conversations between Jenny and Tom. 
Notice how Tom uses the tones in his replies. Then, practice the conversation with a partner. One, the new office is pretty. Pretty, it's amazing. Two, my new computer is okay. Okay, it's fantastic. Three. The canteen is good. Good, it's wonderful. Four, my colleagues are okay. Okay, they are absolutely fantastic. Five, the working environment is pleasant. Pleasant, it's superb. Six. The view from my office is nice. Nice, it's gorgeous. Unit twelve, page seventy nine. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Tom is talking to Mrs. Warner, Nick's mother, about future jobs he and his friends want to do. Listen to the conversation and fill in the blanks with no more than three words. We had a good discussion yesterday about our future careers. Did you? With Nick? Yes, and also with Chang. Good. Nick said that you want to become a teacher. I've changed my mind. My mum is a teacher. She has mountains of work to do behind the scenes, preparing lessons, marking, giving feedback. She always has to work overtime without extra pay. I'd choose a nine-to-five job. I know. Then there's the unpleasant task of dealing with lazy or naughty students. I'm not that patient. But it's rewarding when your students are successful and they appreciate your efforts. What about Chang? She said she's interested in travelling, and she's a sociable girl. She wants to become a tour guide. That sounds good. What about Nick? Nick doesn't want to spend so much time on academic subjects. He'd prefer to acquire some applied skills and get a job right after school. Did he tell you which job? He mentioned becoming a mechanic. He's fascinated by cars, and he's good with his hands. I know, but it won't be easy. He'll need to learn lots of skills to do it. Unit twelve, page seventy-nine. Skills two. Listening. Activity three. Listen again, and decide if the following statements are true or false. We had a good discussion yesterday about our future careers. Did you? With Nick? Yes, and also with Chang. Good. Nick said that you want to become a teacher. I've changed my mind. My mum is a teacher. She has mountains of work to do behind the scenes, preparing lessons, marking, giving feedback. She always has to work overtime without extra pay. I'd choose a nine-to-five job. I know. Then there's the unpleasant task of dealing with lazy or naughty students. I'm not that patient. But it's rewarding when your students are successful and they appreciate your efforts. What about Chang? She said she's interested in travelling and she's a sociable girl. She wants to become a tour guide. That sounds good. What about Nick? Nick doesn't want to spend so much time on academic subjects. He'd prefer to acquire some applied skills and get a job right after school. Did he tell you which job? He mentioned becoming a mechanic. He's fascinated by cars and he's good with his hands. I know, but it won't be easy. He'll need to learn lots of skills to do it.